It was a muggy Friday night, and the air felt thick with anticipation. School was finally out for the summer, and my friends and I had plans to celebrate. We were supposed to meet at the old abandoned warehouse on the edge of town, a place that had been our secret hangout spot for years. The place held memories of countless summer nights filled with laughter, secrets, and dreams. We'd sneak out, escaping the suffocating heat and the watchful eyes of our parents, and lose ourselves in the freedom of youth. I was the first to arrive, which wasn't unusual. Leaning against the crumbling brick wall, I waited, listening to the distant hum of traffic and the occasional hoot of an owl. The stillness of the night felt strange, almost foreboding. Minutes ticked by, and the eerie silence grew heavier. I pulled out my phone and checked the time. They were all running late, which was unlike them. As I turned to leave, I heard footsteps behind me. Relief washed over me. Finally, they had arrived. I turned back, expecting to see my friends' familiar faces. But before I could fully turn around, something hard struck me across the back of my head. I stumbled forward, barely catching myself on the rough pavement. Hey! What the- I managed to sputter before another blow landed on my ribs, sending sharp pain coursing through my body. I tried to get up, but hands were on me, pushing me down, hitting me from all sides. Panic surged through me. I fought back, but I was outnumbered and overwhelmed. My vision blurred as I caught glimpses of masked faces, but it was too dark to make out any features. Stop! Why are you doing this? I screamed, my voice cracking with fear and confusion. For a moment, everything went silent. Then, one of them spoke their voice muffled, but unmistakable. We warned you, Max. We warned you to stay away from her. My heart sank. I knew that voice. It belonged to Ryan, my best friend since kindergarten. The realization hit me like a truck. These weren't just random attackers. They were my friends, my brothers. Ryan, what the hell, man? I gasped clutching my side where the pain was worst. What's going on? He stepped forward, pulling off his mask. The moonlight revealed his conflicted expression, anger mixed with something that looked almost like regret. The others followed suit, revealing familiar faces twisted with rage. You knew how I felt about her, Max, Ryan said, his voice shaking. But you went after her anyway. I tried to explain, but the words stuck in my throat. Yes, I had been talking to Emily, but it was innocent. At least I thought it was. I never meant to hurt anyone, least of all my friends. I didn't think it was like that, Ryan. I swear. She's just a friend, I managed to say, my voice trembling. Just a friend? He spat, disbelief and hurt evident in his eyes. You're a liar, Max. Before I could say anything else, another blow landed on my stomach, and I doubled over in pain. I couldn't understand how things had escalated so quickly. These were the guys I'd grown up with, who'd stood by me through everything, and now they were tearing me apart. I remembered the first time I met Ryan. We were five years old, and he helped me build my first treehouse. We'd spent countless hours together, sharing secrets, dreams, and fears. And now all of that seemed meaningless in the face of this betrayal. Eventually, the beating stopped, and they left me there, bruised and broken. I lay on the cold ground, trying to process what had just happened. The betrayal stung more than any of the physical blows. I spent the night in the warehouse, too hurt and afraid to move. As the dawn broke, the first light of morning creeping through the broken windows. I struggled to my feet, every movement a reminder of their cruelty. My clothes were torn, and my body ached, but the pain in my chest was the worst of all. In the days that followed, I tried to reach out to them, to make them understand. I called Ryan, but he wouldn't answer. I sent messages, but they went unread. I even went to his house, but his mom said he wasn't home. I saw the pity in her eyes, the unspoken understanding that something had changed forever. 
The town felt smaller now, its familiar streets and faces suddenly alien. I couldn't escape the whispers, the knowing glances. Emily tried to talk to me, to understand what had happened, but I couldn't face her. The thought of her knowing the truth, that I had been beaten by my own friends because of her, was too humiliating. One evening I found myself back at the warehouse. The place that once held so many good memories now felt like a graveyard. I sat on the floor staring at the graffiti-covered walls and let the tears come. I cried for the friendship that was lost, for the trust that was shattered, and for the boy I used to be. As the weeks turned into months, I slowly began to heal. The physical wounds faded, but the emotional scars remained. I learned to be more aware.